Hello everyone, it's Scott here and welcome to the next lesson on setting up our player movement. So hopefully this is the, the last thing you've all been waiting for. Um, this is where we're actually going to take our first look into Uscript and uh, create some very simple uh, game logic or programming or behaviours. Okay, so in a few lessons uh, previously at the start of this we installed uh, the Uscript Personal Learning Edition. Um, if you didn't do that, make sure you go back to that lesson and make sure it's set up. And the way you'll know that Uscript is set up is that you will have a Uscript folder and also under the Tools menu you'll have something called Detox Studios and Uscript Editor. The shortcut for this is Control and U which will bring up the editor. So for the first time let's click on this. So we'll get an automatically check for script updates, so we're just going to click Yes. And we need to accept our uh, licensing terms. I'm just going to close out of that. So this is the UI for Uscript, okay? And we're just going to full screen this and I'll talk you a wee bit through it. So in the middle, you will see that there's just a big grid sheet. And what this grid sheet is literally, it's all your, your uh, commands, all the, the scripts that will go into the, the game. And this is known as a graph. So these graphs are uh, your, your game logic it's visual game logic okay and that's what the the beauty of uscript is uh, is about it's um you're able to click and drag nodes which have different functions and will actually uh make your game work it'll um you tell it uh, what what you need it to do okay under the left hand side we have the toolbox and in the toolbox we have all the different commands so we have things like actions uh, such as animation application assets, cameras, events. This is all the kind of um, actions and um, things that will happen in our game. We've got things like conditions so it can compare numbers together. So maybe if we're spawning, um, say we're, we're, we're going to have some health in the game and maybe we have a maximum of three health, then we can compare to see what our current health is against um, how much health is we're going to get. Um, we've got things like uh, gates and switches, we have events, so events such as whenever after a certain amount of time has passed or, or every single frame of the game check to see for something. Um, we have variables which are just data stores or uh, data types, um, again we'll go through these whenever we're actually making our, making our, uh, our scripts. So we're just going to close out of this for the time being. And what you'll notice is that it's actually made a new fo a new file or a new game object in our level called Uscript. And this little guy here is the default Uscript, the default graph for our um, our uh, our game or for our level. Sorry. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a, a graph specifically for our player, and this is called like a a prefab script. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into Uscript by hitting Control and U. Close out of that. We're going to click File and New. So we're at a blank file. Then we're going to go and hit File and Save As. And using the default directory, Uscripts, we're going to call this the Player Script. So this is the, the script or the graph for our player. And we're going to hit Save. Now you're going to get this really important uh, uh, box, which we need to um, we need to look at very carefully. So what this is saying is assign a graph to a master game object. Now what we're going to do is we're going to press no because um, we only click yes if this is a script for our level. Okay. However, this is going on to a prefab, so it says or no to manually assign the graph to a game object or a prefab later on. So we're going to hit on no. Okay, then we're going to get this compiling error, so or sorry, not error message. <laughs> um, so it's just it was just compiling the script, even though there's nothing in it. And what you'll notice is under graphs we have our new player script. So uh, we're just going to come out of this for the time being. Now we need to actually apply this graph to the game object, which is our player. Now we do have a prefab, okay, but we're just going to work uh, using this guy for the time being. <coughs> <clears throat> and to do this, to add a graph or to add our script onto our object, we're going to go to Component, Uscript, Graphs, and we're going to add the player script. 
So now you'll see under our inspector for our player, we have the, the player script uh, graph assigned to it. So player script component. This means that any programming or any of the nodes we put into our, our player graph will then be applied to this object, which is our prefab. Now I'm just going to update our prefab because now we have a we have this component and yet if we actually click our player prefab it's not there. So to replace the or to update the, the prefab we just select our player here and we just drag that onto player and that will just update it which is very very handy. Okay now let's actually go about setting up some player movement because that's the the principle the key principle thing we need to do. So we're going to go to, uh, sorry, not that. We're going to hit Control U for U script, or you can press Tools and U script. So we're just going to make sure that we are in our uh, player script graph, which we are because it says Current Graph Player Script, or we can just double click on Player Script, and that will also load it. So let's actually look at how to um, bring in some some notes that we can work with. So we're going to make what's called a uh, a player movement. And the player movement is going to be triggered by keyboard presses on our keyboard. So what we're going to have is when we press the W key, then we're literally going to move our character. Okay. So to do this, we need to right click and click add. And we're going to go to events. We're going to go to input events. And we're going to have an input event. Now, another quick way of doing this, and it's probably my preferred way of doing it, and the developers at Detox Studios also um, suggest you use this, is you can just type in a name into the toolbox search. So just type in an input. And we look for the input events. So this is an event, okay? And it has a little kind of circle here. So this is gonna be dragged, or this is gonna go into something. And you notice if you click and drag here, you get a little uh, kind of wired line, okay? Um, so the next thing we need to do is we need to actually take this input this input event fires out um, something from the keyboard mouse or joystick so we need to actually filter this input into a, a, a specific button so the next thing we need to do is under input we searched input we need to look for the filter so there's an option called input events filter so this will filter the, the input depending on a specific key input from the, uh, from the, the, the keyboard mouse or joystick. So we're just going to uh, click that and that will add one in. So what's happening is we're going to have on input event. We're going to click and drag this in. So these are connecting nodes together, which is really, really handy. And then we have an input down. So if a key button or if a button is being um, has been pressed down, then something will happen. It'll come out of here. If a button is being held down, something will happen. Or if a button is being released or being pressed up, then something will happen. <coughs> and we also have an option called key code. And it says none at the moment because nothing's actually assigned to it. It's not filtering any keys. So what we're going to do is, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to key code and we're just going to search or we're just going to type in W into here and you'll see it automatically applies the key code W. Or you can also expand this list and choose any kind of key that you want. So none, backspace, tab, clear, returns, periods, um, question marks, backslash, and then we have all the letters as well. Um, and what I tend to do is for letters anyway, I just type in the letter and it automatically finds it. So what's happening here is on a button press on the keyboard happens, then this triggers. And as soon as this triggers, then a wire is being sent up like electricity. So this is triggered, goes into here, and then it's saying, okay, W is being pressed. Now what's going to happen? So what we want to happen is while we're holding down the W key, we want something to happen. And what we want to happen is a transform, it's called in Unity. And a transform is a, a movement, essentially or a translate. So we're going to type in transform. I'm just going to expand this out. And we're just going to look for the the, the one we want here. There's quite a lot of them here, so bear with me. Oh, 
Oops, it's not that one, sorry. It's quite a big list here. Okay, so it's under translate. And what we want is this one here. Translate uh, Unity Engine Vector 3. Sorry, it's not that one. Bear with me. One moment. So it's actually um, it's actually just translate float, float, float. So instead of the vector 3, we're just going to choose float, float, float. And that will bring one of these guys in. So transform is um, basically either movement, rotation, or scale. But translate itself is movement. So it's moving at x, y, or z. So on an input press, it's filtering it for only the W key. So if the W key is being held down, that we're going to translate an object, okay? And the object will be translated, i.e. moved, in either X, Y, or Z, or all three. So let's set up the actual object that it's going to move. Now the object is going to be itself, because this is going to be, this, um, from earlier, we applied this to our player, okay? So we need to right click, we need to add a variable, and all the variable is, it's just a, a piece of data, okay? It could be a number, it could be a true or false statement, it could be a game object. Um, but in this case, we actually want it to be set to the owner, the owner game object, which is the player. So we want this to actually translate the player. We want it to move the player. So back to here and our instance, we're just gonna click and drag this instance onto this object. So now what's happening is, the instance that this is going to move is the owner, which is itself the owner game object. Okay, and now for the amount we actually want it to move by. And we do this by either typing values into here, or we can hook up uh, numbers into this as well. So what we're going to do is for the time being, we're just going to uh, type in a value. Now we want this guy to move on Z. I'm just going to click our player. We want him to move um, on the Z axis, because that's where we've got the little front. So basically, Z is the front of our character. So in Z, we're going to type a very small amount of 0 0.1. And that is it. We're going to test this. Um, it's really important that whenever we make changes, we then test it. So we're going to click File and Save. And this is really important that you do that before you want to che or check out your changes. So with that, I'm just going to uh, close out of this. And we actually just forgot to set up our camera. Um, so we're just gonna click our camera and just move it just so it is behind our player, like so. And now we're gonna try this. So I'm gonna hit play. And so our game is now running and I'm gonna press and hold the W key. And what you'll notice is when we hold it down, he now moves forward, which is really cool. And when we let go, he stops. So well done folks, you've made your first uh, piece of uh, script. So we're just going to turn off play. And now we're going to go back into your script. We're going to press Control and U. And for our dual stick shooter, we want him to be able to move forwards and backwards. And um, we're not going to make him move left and right just yet. We're going to do that in a separate video uh, for player movement, or sorry, for player looking. Um, so we literally want to do this again, only using the key code S for backwards, or you can use an arrow key. And then under instance, we want it to be players or the, the owner object as well. But we also then want Z to be minus 0 0.1, which is the reverse value really, or the opposite value. So we can actually just clone this really quickly. We can, use, uh, we can just uh, click and drag to do a marquee selection like so. And we can hit control and C, or we can go to, uh, let's see, can we copy from up here? No, we can't. You can right click and hit copy you can right click and hit paste. And that will literally duplicate this uh, this event, or these functions, sorry. So I'm just gonna drag that from here to here. I'm gonna change the key code to S, like so. And under transform, we're gonna change this to minus 0 0.1. Now we need to compile this, so file and save. <coughs> so what's happening is, under an input event, so whenever a button on our keyboard is being pressed, it's going to filter it out if it's W, and if it's being held down, then transform 
our owner object, which is the cube, by uh, 0 0.1 on Z. So translate means that it will move. And we also have an input event. If the key code S is being pressed, if it's being held down, then translate the cube by minus 0 0.1. So let's give this a go. So if I hold down S, he moves backwards, but hold down W, he moves forwards. And very simply, that is your very first script. So well done, folks. Um, in the next one, we will then set up a look at motion. So it will look at wherever the mouse is, and then we'll actually have the camera follow our player. So well done for your first time in new script. Um, hopefully you'll see how easy it is to actually uh, use this. And I will see you in the next lesson. Thank you.